Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. Cancel the delusional Hulu diatribe by the professional victim once again. Groundless accusations and endless whining, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's latest Hulu documentary is history, y'all. Too self-centered? They are just playing, Harry and Meghan really do see themselves as perpetual victims. Alright, so the whole documentary, mockumentary more like, is centered around the blame game. It is generally William's fault for not bending his duties to accommodate whatever it was that Harry was demanding. It is a story of accusations and a whole lot of finger-pointing. It reminds me almost of old grievances that we heard all about in Harry's memoir. Oh, that's right, we did. When Harry went to UK, supposedly to support and help and comfort his cancer-stricken father, well, he was on TV discussing how much he loved his family. And he wanted to see his brother, on and on and on he went. Well now, we are kind of scratching our heads, because by the time he did that, he already knew about this stupid docudrama. Given all those TV kudos to family members he had trashed was a bit awkward? No, they just think being the victims of their own narrative is absolutely divine. So yes, they trash everyone on TV, five minutes later are singing their praises, and think we all just go along with the narrative. Typical spoiled brat behavior. Obviously, Harry is using the Invictus platform to peddle some hate and spite. It's disgusting. There would of course be no Hulu diatribe by Harry were it not for the coverage and Harry's position with Invictus. But then, Harry abused his position with Invictus to trash his own family. Family members who, by the way, offer tremendous support to the military as well as its veterans. Harry crossed a line that he should have never have crossed. A line that ultimately reveals that Harry and Meghan not only never really cared about their charity platforms, they hate their country. And Harry also said the same about his and Meghan's Australian tour. He said the royals were so jealous of Meghan's success. He equated it with the success of Princess Diana when she went there married to King Charles. Why does anybody need yet another Harry documentary? His yet another, yet another life, his yet another, yet another family, Invictus Games, I mean it just drags on and on. Then again, I guess Harry figures that somebody finds him interesting, just who might that be? So this documentary, he's got to be kidding, the host Robert Jobson, he's a lousy royal commentator. He's just no good. And he tried to be a look so dignified than he was. When William and Rose were rumored to be having an affair, he wrote a vicious article about it. He made things up, he greatly embellished what he said, just kind of like Harry does when he wants to be credible. So I guess he's mad because William is spending time with people who actually matter, and without Harry they aren't. I mean his statement that William shouldn't hang around with a recovering Catherine and his three children, because he needs to spend time with Harry is all the evidence you need that Harry is totally lost. Harry is totally desperate now, don't you see and it's because Harry and Meghan have ran out of money. I guess he called his father and couldn't get through, so he went by to see his father. He thought he saw an opening that his father couldn't pass up. He wanted money or he wanted his working royal status restored, while King Charles said no to both, now was his one chance. Harry's used this weird phrase a couple of times, the mission continues, in a few interviews. And it seemed so off to me at the time, so out of place, but it makes perfect sense now, actually. He was actually talking about this documentary the whole time, right? I mean, doesn't he realize his brother has the support of his dad and Camilla, the Princess Royal, his immediate family, the Middletons, the Tyndalls, Ed and Sophie and essentially the entire royal family is with him on this? Somehow though, he's convinced himself that the rest of the firm needs him. It's Harry who needs back in the family. And why don't they make this effort to reconcile with Thomas Markle? Um, he's actually one who's asked for that. He sent the king a card. And some good wishes have been sent by Thomas Markle Jr., through interviews and YouTube. That's more than what the dads on the real royalty of Montecito are doing. 
The Spencer women were with William at the air ambulance event and the Middletons are too. The real royals. The actual help and support system. They're one united family. Meghan and Harry, well no, they're stuck in California, but that's their doing. Looks like Harry's trying to use this to launch a new career, though. Good luck with that. Now they're saying he's on a mission to attack historical wrongdoing. Right. Well, in Harry's delusional brain, such a mission would just give him the right to travel all around the world and speak to people who are suffering and whose ancestors suffered in some big way. This would also explain what Harry was saying to the First Nations leaders. So, since most of the members of the Commonwealth were at one point under British rule, can you imagine him rolling through these countries and demanding not just the British government and taxpayers pay up some reparations, but to get down on their knees and also make a public apology for the Deacon dynasty? Well, nice try to erase the Africa Park controversy, Bob. Harry is still on the hook for the Baca people. And I do feel bad for the royal family. Harry and Meghan look like they're never going to leave the royal family alone. And it makes me angry. But it makes me also really, really sad for Kate, Princess of Wales. She's still recuperating from her surgery and their king, King Charles, is dying of cancer. They don't need the added stress from Montecito at this juncture. Harry and Meghan are just eaten alive with jealousy. Prince William and Kate, Princess of Wales, are going to someday be King and Queen of England. And Harry and Meghan, well, they're just a couple of nobodies. Nothing at all without their connection to the royal family. Harry should be banished. Exiled forever for his own mental health. He is so caught up in this victim narrative. And he obviously cannot break free from it. And Meghan will 100% monetize this. Maybe the king should do it to quash her glee. And if they're still somehow in debt to Oprah, well, that tells us a lot. I believe that Harry harbors a deep down real anger with his mother because she did die and she wasn't around to pimp him inside of the royal family. I mean, he's not capable of playing the Game of Thrones, and Meghan is a mother replacement. This one really has caused him to all come tumbling down. The royal family certainly doesn't need the two of them. Sure, the situation is not perfect, but it's workable, and they need to leave Catherine, Princess of Wales, and the Wales children alone. Harry has always been pretty self-centered, even when he was a little boy. He was very possessive, especially of his mother and towards his brother, William. But that kind of stuff happens between brothers, it's pretty common. I mean, I wonder though if Harry knows that he's not a little boy anymore, he's supposed to be a grown man. There is also an excellent photo out there somewhere. It's from around 2013 or 14 or 15, I don't remember the occasion. But William and Harry were sitting watching some kind of event and Catherine was sitting in the middle. Now she appeared to be doing everything she could to talk Harry around from the mother of all sulks that he appeared to be having. She was doing her best to help him cheer up and it wasn't working. She just starts to look exasperated, frustrated, fed up, and Harry looked like a little toddler that has been refused some candy. So he's holding his breath, and he's ready to scream. He still shows that same expression in some of his more modern photos. I've been wondering about why Harry always walks around looking like somebody just murdered his puppy, and I couldn't help but recall an interview that he gave after Her Majesty the Queen passed away, saying that 2023 had been the year that he and Meghan had planned as the time for reuniting with the family. Knowing how stupid and gullible he is, Meghan probably programmed him to believe that no matter what he said about his family, they're gonna welcome them back with open arms. As soon as Harry says he's ready to come home, well, there he is. But there's a problem with that. The royal family is not gonna allow those two to walk all over them again. And that would explain why Harry seems so confused every single time his overtures are rejected. Ah, Meghan told him that the royal family was going to be begging them to come back, that they would be so happy they were going to forgive all the lies they have told about the royal family. Well, by this time, how does Harry not know that Meghan Markle is a lying, scheming, self-serving, evil woman? I mean, why does he even assume ever that she told him the truth? 
now it looks like it was Megan who killed Harry's puppy. We have been watching Harry in this freefall from a young age, actually. The royal family has always sheltered him, always covered up his bad behavior. When she first started dating Harry, the royal family made her feel welcome. They did make her feel like part of the family. They welcomed her wholeheartedly. So she's cooperating with the interview, but there's no doubt what the shoes were. We all know what the shoes were, and partying all night and keeping the future king and queen awake with all that racket, making no effort to quiet down, common pigs. The straw that broke the camel's back was when Meghan somehow managed to get into William's private living area, and she was caught red-handed. She was taking pictures of the children's bedrooms, because she's incredibly jealous and wants everything that Catherine has. Because Catherine has what Meghan has always wanted, and never will have the class. Catherine will be a queen, whereas Harry and Meghan did not quit. I don't believe they walked away, I believe they were let go. And Meghan Markle was never pregnant with those invisible children, and Harry is not going to become American, because he would have to give up the titles. No, you're not allowed to have a title as a citizen. You're allowed to still be a citizen, but you have to give up the titles. Because Anthony Hopkins just gave back his knighthood, threw it back at the UK so that he could become a US citizen. So there we are. And Harry is terrified of his auntie and Princess Anne, because she's the royal that carries out the most royal engagements. And she's also the trustee of the Queen Mother's estate. If you read Lady Colin Campbell's book, The Real Diana, then it will tell you Meghan used that book to research and to copy Diana copying, to cosplay Diana. So there we are. And I think, with Lady C's predictions, in this spring, Harry and what's her face will, oh, it's not going to happen for those two. Talking about the invisible children, I haven't heard anybody mention this, but what mother just leaves her kids shortly, you know when the weather was like that in California. It was scary stuff, what mother leaves her kids behind in those days in California at that time when the weather was like that. It was scary stuff, because I mean basically the rainstorm was basically trying to just wash states off into the ocean and I think if you you know if you were that you would want to be at home with your children just in case wouldn't you but I mean honestly when I look at Harry and Meghan I just see what you know made so ridiculously complicated and stressful so unnecessary, they really were bothered by the media. They could have just started quietly living their lives, they could have still done their charitable work without getting themselves in the headlines so much, they just you know, you could have saved so much money on PR companies and and in back grid and their propaganda of fake awards and clothing why don't they just enjoy themselves if they're real god going places with the kid you know and they you could just live in a more affordable it's still beautiful home in LA is really they are the cause all this insanity. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.